in July 2006, I was coming back from London, and I was sitting at Heathrow Airport in a restaurant having a pint or two. <laughs> but during that time, the airport security was on high alert because a few weeks earlier, they found a bomb in a car which was parked in central London, which luckily they managed to defuse. So fearing another terrorist attack, the security was heightened all over, but especially at the airport. So I'm sitting in this restaurant, watching these heavily armed military police walking by with their dogs, and you just get that insecure feeling that comes upon you. Especially if you've got black hair, brown eyes, and an olive complexion. We also needed to go through major airport security checks, and I'm not simply talking about walking through a metal detector. You have to basically, basically take off half of your clothes. You have to take off your watch. You have to take off your belt. You even have to take off your shoes. But isn't it amazing how certain past experiences actually prepares you for current situations? See, I grew up in a suburb which has a reputation of gangsters and drugs and violence. At the age of 14, we used to sit in my friend's house, and his house was directly opposite an open field. And many Saturdays at 5 p.m., two rival gangs used to come up, and they used to clash. And these 14-year-old boys, witnessing these brutal gang fights, exposed to violence. My first year of high school, I witnessed police brutality on students. Police coming onto the school grounds, shooting tear gas and rubber bullets, and beating kids for standing up for equal opportunity. And there was many times in the hawk in the area, and I got mugged, even had a knife put to my throat. So exposed to life-threatening circumstances. So going back to these major airport security checks was basically nothing in comparison to what I experienced growing up. I went through it with ease, I boarded the plane, and I was ready for this long, uncomfortable flight back home. Uncomfortable because my seat was broken and it couldn't be fixed. I was about to embark on a 12-hour journey sitting in a very uncomfortable position. But then I had somebody saying 34A, and that instantly rang a bell because it was my seat number. And as I looked up, I saw these three military police approaching me, and my heart started to beat faster and faster. Mr. Brown, please take your luggage and come with us in this commanding tone. I mean, what was I supposed to do? Say no? I think I got such a fright, but still wanting to my time, I called. I gave them a gentle smile. And I said, thanks for getting me out of the seat. <laughs> I was taken off the plane. They took me to a small room, checked my passport, and asked me all sorts of questions. So how long have you been in London? What are you doing here? And who are you traveling with? At that point, the pints that I had earlier was instantaneously out of my system because of shock. Then the plane started to move. And I knew, Lance, you are not going home tonight. So let me ask you a question. This happened to you. How do you feel about it? What would your response be? Will you be angry? Maybe a bit upset? Will you ask yourself that question that's familiar to many of us? Why does this happen to me? I then met another guy with a took off the plane, black hair, brown eyes, and olive complexion. And when we met, it was actually quite funny because we were dressed in similar clothing, same brown jacket, similar jeans, and he's got a hobby of taking pictures of people in motion. So when some paranoid passengers saw the two of us dressed in similar clothing and this guy taking these photographs, he decided to notify the airport security and they needed to act. After lots of questioning, we were taken to a five-star hotel and really treated for one day. <laughs> I remember sitting in this beautiful, breathtaking room, just enjoying the ambience, the fine furniture, and, and the open bar. <laughs> and then I put my head on this king-size bed. I closed my eyes, and I said, Lance, this is the life. I chose to use this experience as an opportunity to live like a VIP in London for one night. And my idea with sharing is we have two opportunities around us all of the time. You have to recognize those opportunities and act on it. It may not seem like an opportunity at the time, but you must be willing to explore your potential. Instead of waiting for something to happen, you have to step out and create your own opportunities. Because no matter what your background, no matter what your education, it can take you from where you are to reaching for the stars. 
I got married when I was 27 years old at a basic job as a filing clerk, and things weren't looking very bright. And this job I did for many, many years, and I wasn't going anywhere, until one day I made a conscious decision to do everything to the best of my ability. And when you start doing things to the best of your ability, doors open and opportunities are created. A few years later, I was in London giving a presentation to a group of professionals about the South African tax system. So how do you go from filing to presenting in another country about income tax? I started going through these files, and it was income tax files of high net worth individuals. And the more I got into it, the more I started understanding the various concepts. And I recognized an opportunity that could make a difference in my career, that could make a difference in my life. And each day, I'll take a different section of the Income Tax Act home and go through these definitions. Gross income definition, the total amount in cash or otherwise received by or accrued to in favor of such a resident. And the stuff started to make sense. General deduction formula, expenditure and losses actually incurred in the production of income, which is not of a capital nature. And during this time, I decided to pursue a, a degree part-time. And then I joined a small organization who was part of a global network of accounting firms. And I recognized an opportunity to make in some international context. Because as a boy growing up in the suburb exposed to gangsterism, drugs, violence, we also have dreams. And my dream was always to go visit London. I wanted to experience it. And I knew this could be possible. And after a few months, I decided to do some research on the UK tax system. Purchased various international textbooks, and I started going through this. Contacted friends who's been in the UK for a number of years and received their, week, received their, their tax returns so I can get used to the tax compliance procedures. Went onto companies' websites and received their weekly tax updates. And after about five months, after gathering all this information, I decided to get in touch with this company. And the first thing I did was I made a list of all the directors in this large organization, and each day I'd send out an email to one director per day, each day with lots of enthusiasm, with lots of passion, with lots of energy. My name is Lance Brown. I've got a passion for tax. I've been doing research on the UK tax system and seeking an opportunity to gain international experience each day with lots of enthusiasm, with lots of passion, with lots of energy. My name is Lance Brown. I've got a passion for tax. I've been doing research on the UK tax system and seeking an opportunity to gain international experience each day with lots of enthusiasm, with lots of passion. I must admit, by the time I came to the fourth week, the energy levels wasn't as high. <laughs> My name is Lance Brown. I've got a passion for tax. <laughs> I've been doing research on the UK tax system and seeking an opportunity to gain international experience. Now, that just sounded exhausting. But what do you think happened after four weeks after sending out an email each and every single day? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> Not even a confirmation of receipt of my email. But I still had 30 names left. Each day with lots of enthusiasm, lots of passion, lots of energy. My name is Lance Brown. I've got a passion for tax. Six weeks later, they came back to me to say they love my enthusiasm. They want to offer me international assignment. And I was going to be based out in South Kensington. I had no idea where that was. <laughs> it just sounded great. Nothing beats perseverance, patience, and most importantly, determination. So you can imagine the feeling when I landed in London, knowing that I've stepped out, that I've created something out of nothing. The agreement was I was going to be based in a personal tax division of this large organization. I needed to do a presentation on the South African tax system. And I also needed to do an article on this assignment. And this article, together with a picture of me standing at the Tower of London, was placed in an international newsletter and distributed throughout the world. A few months later, I was back home. I now had my degree. I had international experience. And I had this amazing newsletter which reads, I've got a passion for tax and always seek ways. <laughs> to broaden my knowledge, skills, and experience. What awesome marketing material. You have to use the resources that's available to you to make a difference in your career, to make a difference in your life. So you have to step out of your comfort zones, try new things that involve stepping out of your comfort zones and doing things to the best of your ability. Instead of waiting for opportunities to happen, you have to step out and create your own 
because no matter what your background, no matter what your education, it can take you from where you are to where you need to be. And when you face challenges, embrace it, learn from it, and create opportunities out of it. Because what you resist will persist. And what you befriend, you begin to transcend. Thank you.